of step two, self-compassion. Fail forward. Don't beat yourself up. First off, you're not in a sprint. It's a marathon. And you're not alone in this journey. Have you seen, if you ever seen a marathon, there's tons of runners with you and they're going to always be supportive of y'all stuff. And also, don't make the diet versus lifestyle mindset. Diet is temporary. Lifestyle is just that. It is your lifestyle. It is what you do. And so learn from your mistakes by failing forward. And this is something where I, this was one of the hardest lessons in the mindset for me. I'm, I had that military mind, do it right, do it right, do it right, hammer it home. Mm-hmm. And every time I would make a mistake, I was compassionate towards myself. I would beat myself up. Mm. So that's a really good point. Before we move into um, a story here, this idea of beating yourself up. Yes. And that's related to that. <laughs> Right. Have you ever said not so nice things to yourself? Right. And we were sort of designing this course and we were talking about the language we wanted to use. We were purposeful in choosing self-compassion because you deserve to be treated with compassion. You deserve to be treated with love and kindness. And your body deserves that too. I don't know about you, but when I used to have a diet mentality, when I used to, you know, be chasing those sad guys and so this is not a bad diet, but when I used to do that, I used to beat myself up. I was like, dang, my body is fat and it's ugly and it's so stupid because it won't do what I say it should do. And, you know, the things that you put behind I am are the things that you create in your life, right? So you want to be sure that you're treating yourself with compassion and you're loving yourself and you say, you know what, I love this body. And this is something that I do all the time, actually. I like, I will journal out and I will be very and I have to say, you know, I'm grateful for this body. Right? And this might be an exercise of time, but it might be something that you try where you just make a list of reasons why you are grateful for your body so you can get in the practice of being compassionate, right? I used to beat myself up all the time. I used to beat this body up all the time. And now I can say, you know what? I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for my legs because they have walked me through, you know, all of these years in life. They, they've traveled continents. What a powerful body I must have, right? I am grateful for this skin because it protects me from the outside elements and keeps me safe. Wow, what a blessing it is to have that skin. But it's a different experience, but we, we are in a culture where we are sort of taught and trained to mistreat our body, yeah. right? And to mis- mistreat ourselves. And our message to you is that you need to treat yourself with more compassion. And here's the biggest problem, like, and I've seen this with countless clients when I work one on one with them. We subconsciously beat ourselves up each and every day so many times and we don't realize it. So, like, uh, I had one client who was like, Oh, I ate cheese and I messed up. I um, can't believe I did something dumb. I'm like, you didn't do nothing dumb. You're a human being. You got hungry. There's a reason why you went to that. And we're going to talk about that in uh, the next. Uh, but I told him, and I gave him a, a auto suggestion to start doing it. So it's start reprogramming, start loving it. Like, well, hey, I'm so grateful that I learned from this cheese, eating this cheese that it's not good for me. Mm-hmm. So now I can find something better to do. Mm-hmm. Like all these mindset hacks are very, very important because a lot of our mindset is actually subconscious. And we don't know that we're doing. Yeah, and so we'll talk about patterns a little bit. That's what we're talking about here because you probably. Have a pattern of treating your body um, not as well, or a, a pattern of you know going into a diet and saying certain things to yourself, and feeling certain things, or punishing yourself. Right? I always think the diet is like punishing yourself because you know that's what we're taught is is what we're supposed to do. But we really want you to start to create a lifestyle mindset. You know what? I'm here. You know what I'm doing is about um, getting healthy and having vitality. And feeling good. So you want to use that exercise we just did in unit one to help you remember the mindset of what you're here for. You're not here to beat yourself up. You're not here to mistreat yourself. Right. And so Jacob gave a really great example of one of his clients who was starting to beat himself up. Right. But our message to you is when you have those slips, slip ups, you can fail forward. Right. You can learn from those mistakes and make a different choice. So Jason, what's an example of that for you? So like when we first transitioned, which when we transitioned, we didn't have any help, nobody to talk to. Nope, it was just us. <laughs> we had friends and family. So, yeah. Everyone was talking about crazy work. 
And so we were in Palomar and found this, uh, supposed to be a vegan restaurant. And they serve waffles. I love waffles. You make me a Belgian waffle. I love you. <laughs> and so we went there and we were going there. We put ourselves in a basketball this place. So like three, four times a week, we would go there to buy my And there's one day they didn't have a box. They was like, oh, well, we have a sandwich. And so I ate it. And once I finished eating the sandwich, she came up and she was like, wait, are you vegan or vegan vegan? And then I was like, oh, man, here we go. What is this? And you know, it was a not so good choice of work in my head. And she was like, I think there's eggs in it. And my first instinct, I wanted to get mad. I'm not paying for this, blah, blah, blah. But I said, you know what? I made a decision. And so instead of getting mad, I said, I have to make a decision here. This place is not compatible with the lifestyle that I'm choosing to live. And so I'm so grateful for it because it helped me start looking at it. I found so many other restaurants close by within walking distance. And we had so many better, so much better meals after that day. Yeah, that's a that's a really great example because we had sort of found one option yeah. and we become dependent on it, we become reliant on it. And so we had a situation, that's what I call it contract, <laughs> but we had a situation that told us, hey. You might need to go and start looking for other options. So we were able to go forward because if it hadn't been for that situation, we wouldn't have even known that we had other opportunities, other places that we could go to. So it really was an example of us using that and being grateful for that, right? So having some compassion there. Now, I have another story, and this one is not like that was a slip that had nothing to do with it. And that's what happened on your journey. You'll go somewhere, you'll eat something, and you'll find out later that that was not what you thought it was. Well, you buy some food and you didn't look at this one label and oh no, it has no power. Look, it happens to us too. Don't beat yourself up about it. You'll have slips that have nothing to do with you. Then you'll have slips where it is you. <laughs> so that's my turn with you. So I had a situation where I, you know, we we were on this journey. One of the things that we are very intentional about is we give ourselves or we just go on vacation, we do little vacations, we do these things. And so we went on a little staycation. We found a resort um, when we were in Panama. And, you know, they had a really great um, buffet that had the concert that's fabulous. Right? They had this amazing salad bar, and I loved it. However, um, when it came to snacks, when the restaurants weren't open, because they had food for me for seven, but the options were, you know, sandwiches, they had meat and cheese, and you know, couldn't eat that, right? They had um, chicken nuggets, couldn't eat that. They had French fries, which I could eat, but I mean, how many French fries can one person eat? And then they had nachos. So I said, you know what? I'm on vacation. I'm not going to make a deal. We were transitioning. We didn't go cold turkey. So I was like, you know, I'll have a little bit of cheese. It won't be a big deal. And so I ate the nachos. And, you know, I ate them gloriously. Like, oh, it's so good. Why am I giving this up? You know? And after I, you know, eating the nachos, you know, went back to my room, I got up from the bed and I felt pain. In my knees. And I hadn't felt that sensation in months. And the only thing that was different was that I'd eaten that cheese. And rather than beating myself up over that, I was like, oh, I'm not eating cheese anymore. And I had a revelation that my joint pain, that inflammation, that inflammatory response came from cheese. And now I don't want dairy. It was that simple. But you know what? I had to have the tool in the last step. It's usually pain or pleasure. I had to have, I, in that case, it was both my body was enjoying it so much. But I had to have that pain response in order to create change. And that's when I stopped eating cheese, right? So I failed forward. I had the experience. I used the lesson from that. And I was able to make a decision moving forward. And that's what you want to do. And everyone through your journey, you will accidentally eat things. Somebody will give you something and you don't realize it. You might make a decision to eat something you might realize after you, you treated yourself with some compassion, that it's okay that I did that because I've learned was a lesson, right? So what kind of things do people think about when they're they're they have a slip? So the main thing here is when you're, if you have a slip, notice the pattern. Our patterns are our habits, which dictate our lifestyle. So one thing is like, was I unprepared? Was I out to eat? Was I in a hurry? Now, this is a big one. Most people don't think about it. 
so many times we just grab the closest thing to it, the order closest things to it from there in the area, especially if you're rushing to get to work mm-hmm. or you got to rush and get the kids somewhere, or if you just got to rush and get back home to your partner. And also, did I succumb to um, peer pressure? It's going to happen. People are not going to always be supportive in the ways that we want them to show up. And sometimes they're going to think they're doing the best thing for them, but hey, eat this meat, right? It has protein in it. <laughs> it has protein. But also, how can I avoid this in the future? And so one of the ways, like CC realized to avoid having joint pain, no more. <laughs> right? And I avoid, like now, if I find a restaurant that's not fully uh, compatible with my lifestyle, I avoid it. I just don't use it anymore. Yeah. So this, this is probably one of the most important uh, lessons. And you know, in life, as Jason said, we all have patterns. Like this is we we're creatures of habit. It might not feel like it to you, but we are one hundred percent creatures of habit, and we all have patterns. And when you start to ask yourself the questions, when something happens, rather than beating yourself up, giving yourself the love and saying, "You know what? I'm grateful for this experience. What can I learn here?" And if you, for example, if you are, you know, in a hurry, like Jason described before, what's the patterns that show up when you're in a hurry? Well, when I'm in a hurry, I don't have time to cook. Right, so I, when I'm in a hurry, I, I go to fast food. When I'm in a hurry, those are patterns. And the beautiful thing about patterns is that once you notice them, you can change them. And so you can make a decision that you know what, I'm gonna have snacks always in my bag, or always in my briefcase, or always in my desk. So when I'm in a hurry, I always have a good option. I'm gonna keep a, a meal replacement shake on hand in the event that I'm busy and I can't cook a meal. Right, I'm gonna know what restaurants to go to. So we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the map. You know, so you can create new patterns, and that's what um, we'll teach you how to do in a little bit as well. Yeah.